Welcome to the MaxFlow VS Variable Speed Training video. This video will cover installation, programming, and troubleshooting. It is provided for you to better understand our products and how they operate. Before beginning installation, make sure to read the installation manual included with the pump carefully and completely. This video is designed to serve as a quick overview and does not replace or supersede the detailed installation or operation requirements set forth in the product's owner and installation manual. For a free additional copy of the manual, please visit Hayward.com. As with all Hayward pumps, Make sure the pump will not be located in an area that may be subject to flooding. Submerged pumps or motors are not covered under warranty. To ensure proper operation, make sure to supply the proper plumbing pipe size and configuration that will maximize the max flow variable speed hydraulic efficiency. Take care when plumbing the pump to avoid allowing PVC glue or primer from entering the internal pump or drive components. In addition, Make sure all electrical wiring conforms to local codes, regulations, and the National Electric Code. The max flow variable speed operates at 230 volts AC, 60 hertz, single phase voltage. The amperage is rated at 5.9. The pump is not designed for 115 volts AC installations. Wiring to 115 volts will cause permanent damage to the motor and drive. Also ensure the pump is properly bonded and grounded for safety. To begin installation, turn off all electrical power at the circuit breaker. Next, remove the wiring access cover on the motor drive. This is done by removing the four screws on top of the cover using a 3 mm hex wrench. When the cover of the drive is removed, care should be taken to ensure no wiring strands or other debris are allowed to fall into the drive area or motor. Next, remove the three wires that serve as test leads for factory performance testing. They are connected to terminals L1, L2, and ground. These leads are not to be used to connect load power to the pump. Next, connect the 230 volt AC line power supply wiring to the terminal block and ground wire to the ground screws as shown in the input power wiring diagram in the manual. You will notice the ground lug incorporates a washer, so make sure it does not fall into the internal section of the motor or onto the circuit board of the drive. Make sure to utilize a watertight conduit connection to the pump's drive to ensure no water gets into the pump's drive or motor. Connect the pump to the pool bonding system using number 8 bare wire. For Canada, number 6 bare wire is used. A lug for bonding is provided on the outside of the drive enclosure. After all electrical connections have been made, replace the wiring access cover on the motor drive. Make sure the motor lead wires are routed in such a way that the wiring access cover can be installed and seated fully without interference. Note that the screws are two different lengths and that the longer set of screws should go in the rear holes of the drive. In addition, the display cannot be rotated 180 degrees. It must stay in its original position facing the rear of the motor. Now we will review startup and programming. First we see the pump display as viewed when the pump is not powered up. You will notice the power LED at the top left as well as the display are not illuminated. In addition, the LEDs for the speed buttons V1, 2, and 3 are not illuminated. When power is applied to the pump, we see that the power LED is now illuminated and that the display shows the drive revision number and then the RPMs of the pump while in prime mode. While in prime mode, pressing the display function button will advance the display to also show the amount of time remaining in prime mode, as well as the amount of power being consumed in watts. The pump is set to start in the default prime mode, which is 3000 RPMs for 3 minutes. When priming is complete, the pump will switch to speed V3. The pump will then run at V3 speed for its program time and then switch to speed V1. The default speeds and times are as follows. V1, 1500 RPMs and no timer. V2, 2400 RPMs for 12 hours. V3, 3000 RPMs for 12 hours. To configure the pump's speeds and timers, begin by pressing and holding the display function button until the configuration menu is displayed. 
The first selection will be the prime mode. Press the up or down arrows to adjust the prime time from 0 minutes up to 4 minutes. Next, press the display function button to edit the speed setting for V1. You will notice the V1 LED is now blinking to indicate the pump is in the configuration menu. The up and down arrows are used to adjust the speed between 600 RPMs and 3000 RPMs, which are the minimum and maximum speeds for V1, V2, and V3. Pressing the display function button again will display the speed setting for V2. Use the up and down arrows to adjust. When the display function button is pressed again, you will see the timer setting for V2. To change, press the up and down arrow buttons to adjust the time, anywhere from 30 minutes up to 23 hours and 30 minutes. Next, press the display function button to change the speed setting for V3. Press the display function button again to change the timer setting for V3. When changes are complete, press the display function button to save settings. Now we can view our changes by pressing V1, V2, or V3. When we press V1, we first see the speed that is currently set. Pressing the display function button will display the current power consumption, shown by the letter P. When we have selected either V2 or V3, pressing the display function button once will display the remaining time left on that timer, shown by the letter H. Pressing the display function button again will show the current power consumption for that speed. When the run stop button is pressed at any time during normal operation, stop will be displayed on the screen. The pump will come to a stop and will remain stop until the run stop button is pressed again, at which point the pump will resume normal operation. To make a quick speed change to either V1, V2, or V3 while they are running, press the up and down arrow buttons to increase or decrease the speed. The LED for the change speed will begin to flash. To save the speed change, press both the up and down arrow buttons at the same time. The LED should now be solid, showing that the speed has been changed. After prime mode, the pump will automatically go to speed and time for V3. It will then change to V1 after the time set for V3 is complete. V2 can only be engaged by pressing the V2 button. The pump does not automatically switch to V2 at any time. Here is an example of a possible installation for the MaxFlow VS. We can connect the pump to a switch, time clock, or filter control relay of a controller for daily startup at V3 for speed and duration, and then the pump will automatically change to speed V1 at the end of the V3 timer. As an example, we could start up in V3 as a cleaner speed and then run V1 at a lower filtration speed. This leaves V2 available for non-daily applications, such as backwash. We are now going to talk about basic troubleshooting. When troubleshooting the pump, it may be useful to run the pump without program functions being active. This can be done in the service mode, which only allows for motor RPMs to be changed. Service mode is entered by removing power to the pump and then pressing and holding the display function button as power is turned back on. Test will then briefly be shown on the display and the LEDs for V1 through V3 will blink together to remind the user service mode is enabled. The pump RPMs can now be adjusted using the up and down arrow buttons. To exit from service mode, cycle the power to the pump off and back on. If needed, you can reset the pump to factory default settings. Remove power from the pump and then press and hold the run stop button while applying power back to the pump. When the pump is turned back on, the screen will display reset. Confirming that all settings have been reset to factory default settings, the pump will then begin to operate in prime mode. For professional help and service, go to Hayward.com and select Dealer Locator which you will see at the top left of the website navigation bar. Next, provide the zip code of where the pump is installed, as well as 1, a search radius, 2, pool type, 3, product repair and service, and 4, variable speed pump. Lastly, select Submit and you will see all local Hayward authorized service centers who can assist with MaxFlow VS installation,
programming, or service. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. We hope the information contained here has helped you with your Hayward MaxFlow variable speed pump. Remember to visit Hayward Pool Products at www.hayward.com along with our social media sites for helpful information about your Hayward products.